All right, guys. So, hey, how can you spread manure in a no-till situation? Hey, man, glad you asked. Glad you asked. Don't you have to work the manure in? Oh, my God. You guys are just loaded with great questions this morning. So, before we get into it, hey, thank you to Vesser Cattle for the super kind shout-out. He had a top 20 list. Fantastic list of channels to to watch. Go watch his video if and check that list against your list and see if there's anybody new on there. Uh, hit the subscribe. We're up to 1,360 subscribers already. Um, just We are just doing great. We're just awesome. This is so fun. I, I love this. It, uh, I never thought I'd have five people watching, let alone, let alone uh, having videos being shared um, around the world and, and uh, being asked to speak down at the Metro with legislatures and, and, uh, you know, I mean, it just, and, and being asked to, to go to people's farms and, and talk. I, I, I never thought that, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, this is super cool. Um, but yeah, to answer the questions, one about the compaction, how on earth in a, in a soil, in a, no soil health, no till situation, can we, um, can we can we spread manure because you have to chase the manure spreader with a tillage implement to break up that compaction and and this field here is a conventional style field it's it's so level of structure it's level of health is that to a conventional field and so you'll see the the distinct you'll see the massive difference between this field and a soil health field um, so this is super awesome because I, I'm glad nobody would believe me if, if I didn't have this on video everybody would be like oh, okay whatever you're just trying to just you know make your niche little channel like no you are gonna see it um, so why don't we just spread the turkey litter in the fall or our manure in the fall stir it into the top little bit so then it's safe well because it's not in that top inch inch and a half of soil in the fall life can start breaking it down over winter, everything kind of just freezes up. Come next spring, life starts breaking it down. We get all these driving rains. The frost goes out of the soil, and as the frost goes out of the soil, them rains have a moment in time where they just flush through the soil. And they're going to take a lot of that nitrogen credits with them. Uh, I, I paid for them nitrogen credits. I don't want them to wash away and then go to the co-op and have to rebuy them. It's my money. I, I like my money. I don't have a lot of it, so... I have to utilize it the best I can, so there's no sense buying something twice. Um, the other part with that is fall and spring runoff is uh, in our in our tilled soil. The you know we've already seen the thousands of videos of that, but in our tilled soil, the amount of runoff just is unbelievable, and uh, there there again a lot of nutrients go with, and that's why we don't spread in the winter time. You don't have compaction in the winter time. But your amount of runoff comes springtime, it's still, it's still there. And then it's also the broadcast versus band. If it sits in the pile over winter, the amount of surface area, the amount of exposure is so little compared to if I had it spread out over the whole field. Every little crumb of manure is exposed to life and weather to get broken down when I'm not ready for it. And it's, a, it's able to just leave me. And that's not good. That's not good. It's either going to get to our drinking water or to our swimming water. And in Minnesota, that's kind of a huge deal. That is a really huge deal. Uh, we got some interviews coming up on that too uh, to talk about that. Um, so the goal I have, this is my next, this is the next couple decades of fertilizer. I will use the commercial fertilizer as little as possible. Uh, but I still need some to just top dress corn a little bit because the manure spreader isn't the perfect applicator. So my goal is is that come springtime, right ahead of the planter, we come out here, we load up the manure, we spread it. So by the time the soil, the big bugs, you know, your worms and beetles and grubs, the big bugs we can see, they come out of the soil and they start eating the, and the breaking down the big chunks. And the soil life then, the microbes and the little things we can't see as that manure sits on the surface of the soil that layer there they start thriving in that zone and they start the nutrient transfer and breakdown and and our rain since we have healthy soil our infiltration is good so as that life starts breaking all them nutrients down they start to go into our soil profile we have a growing plant our crop there just waiting to capture that um that is the system we want but how do we fight this let me spin the camera around 
All right, so you can see this is conventional soil. You can see the ruts, and you can see that I wasn't able to finish my job. So that's a lot of money. If this was corn, I have nitrogen sitting here, and I still have to go buy nitrogen. The P&K credits, whatever, they're here. Um, this fall, I'll come out with the loader, and we'll clean up around the pile here, and uh, we'll back take the bucket and kind of clean this up. So next spring, we can re-spread this, and uh, I'll just have them uh, add to the pile for corn next year. No big deal. Um, but yeah, so you can see what it's like on a conventional till field. We, we weren't able to do our job, plain and simple. Hey guys, so here's where the pile sat. Here's where I drove in and loaded. And what do you see? Corn, 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 corn. Coming right up through the ground. Um, corn, corn, corn. It, uh, we might not get any corn here where the turkey litter spread. It, that, that nitrogen might burn that stuff. But, you know, this, this, there might be a dead spot here because of the nitrogen, but we still got corn shoots up here. And uh, corn, 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 corn. And this is right where the manure spreader sat. This is manure for, so the manure spreader sat here, and that stuff that got spilled, and we got corn popping up. You know what I mean? So then the manure spreader sat here, and I went out, and you can kind of see the road through the residue. <sighs> what, 15, 18 loads went out on this path. My proverbial microphone. Mic drop moment. Um, I mean, really, this is a draw. We're in a draw right here. Water comes from that homestead right where the pile sat into my swamp that I need to tile someday. Sorry for the folks at NRCS that are watching. <laughs> I suppose I should. That is not a swamp. That is not a swamp. <laughs> but uh, that, is a, that is a spot that I'm just going to start stockpiling black dirt. Uh, but anyhow, yeah. So the other field was on a hilltop. And you can see the difference. So how much is it worth? How much money is it worth that... Think about my location. We are East Central Minnesota. We are in a, just a, like a 2100 G, 2000 to 2200 GDU or 85 to 90 day corn area. Uh, we had snow on May 19th uh, or May 9th, both I think. We had snow a week and a half ago. This corn has been snowed on and it's been froze. Um, but yet I got my turkey litter spread on time without damage to the field, and the corn planted on time right behind it. How much is that worth? To me, my business is running. That's worth, that is my life. The, the, <laughs> so that's how much that is worth. This field is going to help keep lights on this winter. Um, our root balls, our root balls are, here I dug one up. The roots, that is our tillage tool. You show me a disc ripper. That one can go four to six feet down like corn roots can, and uh, and then reduce ever having to do it again. So corn, corn does tillage every year, and I do not have to chase it with mechanical tillage. I just chase it with other crops. Your disc ripper, you chase it with a crop, and then you chase the disc ripper with the disc ripper because it doesn't fix compaction. This fixes compaction and it fixes by all this protection on our soil this is like a mat on the highway crew when we're building a road across some marginal soil we roll a mat out why because it disperses the weight it helps carry that's exactly what our residue does our worms and everything's doing the tillage i'm done talking east central minnesota no-till corn on corn turkey litter spread up front with zero damage zero tillage needed boom Peace out.